Why, lords, what wrongs are these? Was ever seen an emperor of Rome thus overborne, troubled, confronted thus, and for the extent of evil justice used in such contempt? My lords, you know, as know the mightful gods, however these disturbers of our peace buzz in the people's ears. They're not to have passed, but even with law against the willful sons of old Andronicus. And what and if his sorrows have so overwhelmed his wits, shall we be thus afflicted by his reeks, his fits, his frenzies, his bitterness? And now he writes to heaven for his redress. See, here's to Job. This to Mercury, this to Apollo, this to the god of war. Sweet scrolls to fly about the streets of Rome. What's this but libeling against the Senate? And blazoning the injustice everywhere. A goodly humor, is it not, my lords? As who would say in Rome no justice were? But if I live, his feigned ecstasy shall be no shelter to these outrages. But he and his shall know that justice lives in center in his health. Whom if she sleep, he'll so awake as she in fury shall cut off the proudest conspirator that lives. My gracious lord, my lovely Santorine, lord of my life, commander of my thoughts, calm thee and bear the faults of Titus's age the effects of sorrow for his valiant sons, whose loss hath pierced him deep and scarred his heart, and rather comfort his distressed plight than prosecute the meanest or the best for these contempts. Why, thus it shall become, high-witted to glows withal. But Titus, I have touched thee to the quick, thy life blood out, if Aaron now be wise, then is all safe, the anchor's in the port. Well, how now, good fellow, wouldst thou speak with us? Yea, forsooth, and your Mr. Ship be imperial. Empress, I am, but yonder sits the emperor. "'Tis he, God and Saint Stephen, give you good den. "'I have brought you a letter and a couple of pigeons here. "'Go, take him away and hang him presently. "'How must, how must money must I have? "'Despiteful and intolerable wrongs. Shall I endure this monstrous villainy? I know from whence the same device proceeds. May this be borne, as if his traitorous sons that died by law for murder of our brother have by my means been butchered wrongfully. Go, drag the villain hither by the hair. Nor age nor honor shall shape privilege. For this proud mock I'll be thy slaughter man. Sly frantic wretch that hopes to make me great in hope thyself thou should govern Rome and me. What news with thee, Amelius? Arm, arm, my lord. Rome never had more cause. The Goths have gathered head, and with a power high resolved men, bent to the spoil they hither march amain, under conduct of Lucius, son to old Andronicus, who threats in course of this revenge to do as much as ever Coriolanus did. Is warlike Lucius general of the Goths? These tidings knit me and I hang the head as flowers with frost, or grass beat down with storms. Ay, now begin our sorrows to approach. Tis he the common people love so much. Myself hath often overheard them say, when I have walked like a private man, that Lucius' banishment was wrongfully, and they have wished that Lucius were their emperor. Why should you fear? Is not your city strong? Aye, but the citizens favor Lucius, and will revolt for me to succor him. 
King, be thy thoughts imperious like thy name. Is the sun dimmed that gnats do fly in it? The eagle suffers little birds to sing, and is not careful what they mean thereby, knowing that with the shadow of his wings he can at pleasure stint their melody. Even so mayest thou the giddy men of Rome. Then cheer thy spirit, for know thou, emperor, I will enchant the old Andronicus with words more sweet and yet more dangerous than baits to fish or honey stalks to sheep. When, as the one is wounded with the bait, the other rotted with delicious feed. But he will not entreat his son for us. If Tamora entreat him, then he will. For I can smooth and fill his aged ear with golden promises. That were his heart almost impregnable. His old ear is deaf. Yet should both ear and heart obey my tongue. Go though before be our ambassador. Say that the emperor requests a parley of warlike Lucius and appoint the meeting, even at his father's house, the old Andronicus. Amelius, do this message honorably, and if he stand on hostage for his safety, let him demand what pledge will please him best. Your bidding shall I do effectually. Now will I to that old Andronicus and temper him with all the art I have, to pluck proud Lucius from the warlike Goths. And now, sweet emperor, be blithe again, and bury all thy fear in my devices. Then go successantly, and plead to him, 